Hello, my friends. Do you like to entertain? I do. I love to have family and friends over tasting the food that I cook. Now, I have a whole bunch of master classes on entertaining. There's actually a whole free download. I'll post the link in the comments that you can download that will take all the pain away of your planning a party. So this is an amazing recipe that you can add to your repertoire. I originally created it for our restaurant, our family restaurant. It's called Speaks Clam Bar and we have two locations. One's in Bradenton, Florida and the other one is in Sarasota, Florida in St. Armand Circle. So I showcased this recipe as a guest chef on ABC7 Sun Coast. Thank you so much you guys for amazing hosts for having me. And I really wanted to share this with you and show you a couple of different variations as well that you can do. So the first thing that we do is we create an antipasto sushi rice. So the risotto, so it starts by cooking your risotto. Now, the way that you cook the, the risotto traditionally is we have some shallots that we saute and then we add some butter and some olive oil to the pan and then we coat the rice with all of that stuff in the pan and then we slowly add in chicken stock until the rice gets to the al dente consistency. That is the proper way to cook the risotto and then we finish it with a little bit of a Parmesan cheese. Now the way that we make the rice for this is a little bit different. We do start, start off in the pot, we saute, the, we coat the rice with a little bit of butter that was melted in the pan, a little bit of olive oil. So we, the, the beginning is, is a little bit different because we don't have, use the shallots and we don't use the wine in this. Okay, so you have your pot, we add your butter, you add your olive oil, you coat your rice with that, and then you make your risotto. Now, what we do is we use a little bit extra water so that, and we use half water and half uh, chicken stock for this. Now, and we keep stirring it and we go into overcook your risotto a little bit. And then at the end, to make it sticky as it would be for this, to make the sushi, we are adding three different types of cheese. Now, I will post the recipe for this specific risotto sushi rice in the comments below, so don't you worry, I've got your back. So once your risotto is cooked and the cheese is mixed in, what we do is we are actually spread it out on this sheet to let it cool, and now we can put it like this in the fridge. All right, and now we can start getting ready to make our sushi. So we have our sushi mat, and it is covered with saran wrap on both sides, because can you just imagine if it's not covered, you'd have to be picking everything out of all of these seams, so that wouldn't be fun. So to make our antipasto style sushi, we have the risotto sushi rice, we have our prosciutto, we have blanched asparagus, we have mozzarella cheese that has been cut into these long strips, we have salami as well that's been cut into these nice and thin strips, okay? So what we do is we start by scooping the rice and we gently press it right into our sushi mat. We're going to go about halfway through. We're going to gently press it in. This is the messy part of making sushi. Now this rice does feel and taste very, very different from the traditional sushi rice. So as you press it in, just gently move it out a little towards the middle with your hands. This is a very highly focused process. And if you have never made sushi before, this may be a good start for you. It's a good st starter roll. 
Now, what we're going to do is we are going to show you this antipasto version. And then we're going to film another video. We have another video with the vegetarian version of this. All right, so we have all of our rice, you see? That didn't take very long. Now we're going to go about halfway up. Now I have my little bowl for rinsing my hands. All right, so we have our rice. Halfway up the sushi roll, now I take this prosciutto and place it here. So we want to make sure that we go all the way to the end. And being that I see that there's a little slice that I could still use, I'm going to just add a little bit more on the end here so that this goes all the way. So now, as you're placing the ingredients on the mat, make sure that you have about an inch border of this rice left so that it tucks in. All right, so we have the salami, the prosciutto. Now we put the salami right on here in kind of a strip like that. Now we take our asparagus. Now, if it's a little bit long, you can trim it at the end. Okay, now we take our mozzarella. What I did is I bought the little bowl of the buffalo mozzarella cheese, and we cut it into these nice thin strips. This is looking really nice. And that's it. That's all that we're going to do here. And now we're going to start to roll. All right, so what we do, is we take our roll and then we kind of tuck it in. One roll, okay? Now we lift the mat and we kind of move it over just like so. And just like this, there we go. We press the ends in and we open it and we're gonna roll it just one more time. There we are. And look at this, this is our beautiful sushi roll. Now I'm going to show you a really nice way to plate this, okay? All right, so to plate this, we have made this artichoke pesto. And all it is, really, really simple, is we have regular pesto. You can get, use your store-bought pesto. And then I use the little jar, it's about four to six ounce jar of marinated artichokes. All you do is you take out your food processor and just pulse those artichokes with the marinating liquid right into the pesto. Now we take our pesto. I'm using this cheese board and we're using the pesto and we spread it right onto the cheese board. This is gonna look so cute. Wait till you see. Oh my, you know what? This is beyond cute. This is spectacular. Anybody who comes to your home, they will be so impressed by this dish. So now we take your sushi roll, usually cut it in half, and then in half again, and then in half again. In half, and then in half, and in half again, okay? And now all we do is we plate. This makes for such a gorgeous contrast. And wait till you see how we're going to garnish this. Now that we have our sushi setting on the sauce, and trust me when I tell you this sauce is gonna add so much flavor, it is insane. So what you could do is you could actually take little skewers if you wanted to, you can add little olives to this if you wanted to. But my suggestion is you take your balsamic glaze and we'll sprinkle this right over. Now this is really going to make this truly Italian style. 
and add so much more unexpected flavor. Now for the final touch, I have these Italian microgreens. I have my tweezers. You don't have to use a tweezer, you can use your hand. It's just when I do food photography, I use my little tweezers and we put these microgreens right on top. Now this really finishes it off. This is what a lot of chefs in the finer restaurants do to give a little, not only does this add a little extra flavor, but also gives that pop of color and height to the plate. If you look at the dishes at the finer restaurants, a lot of them are really built up for the height. But you see how pretty that is starting to look? Now, if you serve this at your next party, all of your guests, I, can, I guarantee, they'll be so impressed by your skills. I'm super excited for you. So you can serve it either with an olive or we can add some antipasto peppers or capers or keep it just like this, just like so. So here we have our antipasto style sushi. And voila. If you do like this video, and I hope you do, because I think you do, I don't see why you wouldn't. Please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and live a deliciously healthy life. And I invite you to really, truly begin to enjoy healthy entertaining.